welcome to the tour of Taihu Lake, the eighth edition. What a great race this has become over the years. Some beautiful scenery and what a backdrop for the opening prologue. Plenty of smiles, but some serious faces too as the riders prepared themselves for the race against the clock. As it ticked down, and the first riders went down the start ramp. There was a few that really fancied their chances. Ben Hill, the Australian, riding for Team Ataki Gusto, always a strong competitor on the Asian circuits. The Tilly Butts there also pushing his weight around this course, but it was the French-Canadian, Guillaume Bovan, who set the benchmark. Tetchkov, well, he thought it was pretty good too, but he had other ideas to knock the Canadian off the top spot. Tetchkov rolled down the ramp. Well, it was a great ride as he hit the line, but it just wasn't quite enough. Time splits are so, so small that it really kind of starts tomorrow. So, I mean, we'll take it. Uh, we have a few guys also in the, in the top 20, I assume, not too far back. So, uh, but yeah, tomorrow starts the, the real thing, but yeah, for sure, we're happy to, to take the win today. Well, there it is, Guillaume Bovan, he took it out. Only just Tetchkov on the same time, just two tenths behind. And Morgan Smith, the New Zealander, just a further second back. And the Chinese rider from Chung King Lok. Great ride by him to be the leading Asian rider. Well, all the jersey wearers, they celebrated. Jason Lowndes there, another Australian also on the podium. So with the prologue done and dusted, let's take a look at stage one. Well, the weather closed in, the clouds came in low, and the rain began to fall. Didn't mind this fella here. Plenty of support for King Locke out on the course. And he was in his elements here. As the riders rolled off from the start line, they were rugged up. They knew it was going to be a solid day in the saddle. Not a long stage, but a short one, and one for the breakaways. King Tempacher, the Frenchman, he led them, along with Vitili Butts and Zorzakis. They worked well together. They sensed that there was an opportunity with the weather. So too did Ben Hill and Cartier, the Canadian. They powered across to this breakaway to form a strong group out in front of five riders. Different teams represented. It was a chance to see how strong and how willing the peloton were to chase them down. The first sprint of the day, Vitili Butts, the Ukraine national road race champion, he took it out. He did a pretty good prologue too, so the bonus seconds were valuable for him. The peloton, they sensed the danger and the chase began in earnest. The sprinters teams were working, but so too were the breakaway. Pacher was keen to push this break along. Ben Hill composed, relaxed, thinking of a possible victory. Zozakis from the Monton Racing Team. Butts, Ukrainian, talking to his team, wanting to know what was going on from behind. For Cartier, he had orders to sit back, not to work too hard, just to keep it ticking over. But Butts, he was anxious. He wanted this break to work. He thought there was an opportunity. And the Erin Train rider, who also jumped across. So Zarkis here went for a long solo shot, but it wasn't quite enough. And as the breakaway got swallowed up with less than five kilometers to go, it was the sprinters teams who took over. Marechko and his team leading them out. He's had 10 stage wins at this great race and he was searching for number 11. Was it to be his day? From here, it looked so. But the Canadian Bovan wearing the leader's jersey, he moved up, tried to challenge, but he faded in the end. Marechko sat back on his teammate's wheel, poised to take his 11th stage win. And what a record it would be but it was his compatriot, Marini, Nicolas Marini for Nippo Vino Fantini. He would come past him in the final stages and take the win for a monumental victory on 
the opening road stage of the tour of Lake Taihu. And the general classification, Bovan held on to the lead, Smith in second now, and Vasluck in third. It was very difficult to do a position because everyone the first stage wants to sprint. But yeah, it's amazing, I'm very happy. And after the injury I had in August, it's a very good result. I worked a lot the last month to arrive here at the top of the condition. Maybe not at the top, but uh, I have a very good shape. We are in China, it's the seventh time I think that I'm here. Yes, it's a good place and uh, very happy to be here. Well, it was a great victory from Marini. You could see the look on his face. We now move to stage two of West Taihu Lake. A simply stunning area, a great part of the world. Well, they rolled out from the start, out to the circuits, and then did seven in total, 117.1 kilometres. In theory, it was another day for the sprinters. But we saw from stage one, the breakaway almost succeeded. There's always a chance. And on a day like today, with the conditions, they weren't really improving, but that didn't dampen the spirits on the start line. Plenty of festivities and local culture on show. The locals were enjoying themselves. The riders, it was some more serious looks on their faces. The dignitaries, they set the race off once more. And again, the riders needed the warm clothing on. The rain came in as they rolled out. And made their way towards the circuits. A little bit of trepidation amongst the peloton waiting to see who would launch the first attack of the day. Well, the first sprint of the day, that's what mattered most to some. And it was a Canadian Cartier once again putting himself in the mix. United Healthcare, the American outfit, also challenging. But Cartier, he would go on the attack once again and he dragged Vitilli Butts, his breakaway companion from a day earlier, out in front with him. The two would form a combine. They weren't teams in theory, but on the road for now they were. Butts was working well. He searched for sprint points on the previous day, and they carried valuable bonus seconds. He wanted to move himself up inside the rankings. So things were going well for the two, but the peloton, they were keen to hold them on a tight rope. Their lead stretched out to one minute and 40 odd seconds. Cartier was keen to push it along all the time. But the peloton, you can see there, they had vision of them around this circuit. And when the bell rang for the final time, Cartier decided to go it alone. Butts was no longer able to keep up. But it wasn't enough, he needed more than just one man to help him work and the peloton once again would swallow him up. The sprinters would move towards the front. This time, would it be a day for Marechko sitting there in second wheel? This time, he timed the sprint just right. Marini in the green jersey, he moved up also, but couldn't do enough to take the stage win. And then in the final meters, Zupa, Busato, and Andreato take me in the front to do all the sprint. And a hard race, awful conditions, very hard on the road. Yeah, today it rained all day, so it wasn't good. Maybe tomorrow it will be better. Well, for Chung King Lok, great ride by him. Still in the red jersey, still going well. How was today? Uh, today, well, today, I prefer it in fact. So there's the general classification after two stages and the prologue. Guillaume Bourvain, the Canadian, still in charge. Smith in second place. And Tetchkov moves up to third place overall.
Well, it simply is a stunning part of the world. That is Lake Taihu and the surrounds. The Moon Hotel there that sits on the foreshore. Some 320 odd rooms. Views that stretch right across the lake and overlook the city itself of Huzhou. There's a history of some 2,300 years. Natural beauty old architecture mixed in with modern beautiful landscapes and of course famous for the ink brush that is known globally the channel channel that runs through the town itself quietly and the hotel is what dominates this marvelous area changing also on today's stage, nestled amongst the mountains, it really does have something for everyone. They pride themselves, they are the home of silk, the land of culture. They're known as the International Garden City, famous for bird life, wetlands. And if you just want to relax by the lake, well, you can think of worse things to do. Also known as an eco-environmental friendly place. And of course the motor industry, specifically the electric car manufacturing, that they are well known for and very proud of. It's a city of tranquility, but it's not just a bike race that they like. The marathon also is run in this part of the world. So let's go to the map now for stage three. 134.3 kilometers, the longest stage so far of this year's race. They start off, they head out along the lake, and then three finishing circuits. Three sprints along the way as well that carry bonification seconds. The race is tight, and certainly, that's what the riders will be looking for today. Plenty of colour and atmosphere at the stage start. And the locals really enjoying themselves with the performance that were on display. And I can tell you for now, the clouds have cleared. Now the rain has stopped. So we should have a lovely day ahead of us. Certainly for viewing.呃对于我们福州来说啊一定是第八届呃福州作为主办城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市之一呃城市
yesterday, good stage. You managed to grab another second back. So what's the plan for today? Maybe uh, the intermediates target those again, possibly? Uh, I think we, we caught them by surprise yesterday. So um, I'm not sure if we can do that uh, twice in, in two days. So um, we'll have a little look and maybe try and come up with something a bit different, and something outside the box. With it being another sprint and, you know, uh, Marechko here and Marini, does that help you guys in chasing anything down? That they're going to, you know, how does that help you? Yeah, it helps us, but uh, yeah, those guys are pretty quick, especially in this kind of, of finishes. You know, my I, I normally like a bit of a, a, a bit of a harder race, you know, because I, I can sprint, but these guys are really, really explosive. So, uh, but yeah, it for sure helps, and uh, yeah, we'll try to we'll try to get it today, get it right, and uh, set up our lead out a, a bit better. So Guillaume Bovin there, the race leader, not giving too much away. There's Nicolas Morini, the winner of stage one, the Italian. And he'd be very happy with his race so far, Morini. He got the better of his countryman, Moreshko, who's now won 11 stages in this race. Well, that is some sort of record for the most stage wins. So they rolled out, one whole peloton, oh, a few withdrawals, six riders have withdrawn since the beginning, there was a nasty crash on stage one that took a few of the Eritrean riders out there, this is Jason Lyons, the Australian, wearing the blue jersey for the youth classification, and Lyons just trying to sneak off the front there. He rides for the Israel Academy squad. But it looks like the St. George cycling team, the Australian team, not too keen to let him go too far. As we see the backdrop there, starting right out the front of the Moon Hotel and Resort. Really famous in this area. What a great place to start the stage. Nicknamed the Horseshoe, well, for obvious reasons. Now this is a rider from the H&R Block squad, also trying to force something off the front. So there's a few riders now keen to get things underway. Gee, they'd be happy with the drier conditions today. Very hot for the opening prologue, over 30 degrees, and then the last two stages, not extremely cold, but very wet and damp. So it's all together, as they roll out, it's going to be a great stage.
So here we are, live pitches now for stage three of Lake Taihu. And this is the first sprint of the day. And you can see there, riders are desperate for some sprint points. And more importantly, the time bonuses that could end up deciding this race. And in the end, it was Stanislaw Bascu who took it out. One peloton all together. And that came at the 24.4 kilometre mark. And so now we go to live pictures of the race. And you can see now, still attacking off the front. A group of three, four riders in fact, now trying to go clear. That's one of the Coles riders there. And again, does that look like the Australian Ben Hill? I think it might be. Wow, he's been very active indeed. And one of the Eritrean riders who was also in the mix, he lost three riders on stage one. That was a real pity. All three were caught up in that big crash. Two of them had to withdraw and one missed the time limit. They didn't break any bones, that was the good news. I was speaking to their director sport if yesterday during the stage. So they're a bit disappointed, but these things happen. It's professional cycling. So it is Ben Hill, the Australian. Wow, he knows how to ride in Asia. He's had some great success here. And he's been joined now, this group of four. They've been swallowed up by a larger group. And certainly quite a few riders represented. There's Nicolas Marini, the Italian, the winner of stage one. He'll look to just protect himself, stay out of the wind today. He's wearing that green leader's jersey after his stage one victory. Marechko certainly is his biggest rival today. There's the big, tall rider in the blue jersey of Jason Lowndes. He's easy to spot, about fifth wheel back there. So Lowndes is active as well. So it's strung out at the moment. And what we're hearing out on course is there is a bit of wind coming off the lake, cross tail. So we're expecting a fast stage indeed. And it looks pretty quick at the moment. As you can see, they are right down the left-hand side of the road. Back to the front now. Jonathan Clark there in the blue colors. Riding for United Healthcare. So this group potentially getting established now. It's a large group. That's Clark there, the Australian. He lives in the US. He's got an American partner. And he's not too keen to push this break along. So it's a large group at the moment. Can they get organized? That's the question. Mareshko also has a teammate there as well. In fact, he may have one or two. This is the Eritrean rider. There's the red jersey of Chung King Lok. So far, so good for the rider for the Hong Kong China team. He just needs to preserve his lead. He did a good prologue and that set him up for that leader's jersey and he's hung on to it since. And that will be a big focus for he and his team over these remaining stages. Jelly Belly also have a rider in this group now. So too Nippo Vini Fantini, Delco Marseille are also present. That's the team who won this race outright last year. Leonardo Duque, the Colombian, it was his final race, would you believe? And he won the tour on the final stage. On that occasion, it was the Australian Cameron Bailey who was leading the race and he crashed the final kilometers and lost the jersey. Disappointment for him, but celebrations for another. And Duque went out on a big note. There's Lowndes, riding for the Israel Cycling Academy. Well, they've had a great race so far with Bovan taking the opening prologue. He crashed on stage one, Bovan, and he hurt himself considerably. He said it, but he managed to regroup Got back on, held onto the jersey. He 
Wasn't sure if he was going to be able to start stage two. He could barely walk around, but the body seemed to handle the rotations on the bike. So Bavan, he's going to fight on. He's a tough competitor, recently coming off the World Championships in Bergen in Norway, where he finished in 35th place. So the peloton not giving them too much leeway. You can see there, they're strung out considerably. So it means that the pace is on just enough. But the breakaway, and you can see right up in the distance there. So it looks like another rider from the United Healthcare squad. This is an American team that's been on the circuit for many, many years here. Big success too. They travel the globe. They've done a lot of racing on the European circuit in the past. A bit more of a focus on North America and Asia this year. They've got some strong riders, experienced riders, and they bring in some young talent as well. Tanner Putt, another American rider for that squad, a sprinter. Well, not too happy with the motorbike getting just a little bit too close there. So the breakaway, settling down now. Trying to work together. And that's the number 134 for the Jelly Belly squad. Tyler Sheldon, Taylor Sheldon, I should say. So you can see the peloton really 20 odd seconds behind. Not much at all because it's a big group don't want to give it too much leeway but you can see it's not an organized chase there's not one particular team at the front Minsk in the red colors there they've got two riders at the front another one moving up now so it looks like they have met, may have missed this move and they've only got five riders here so they can't afford to let this gap open up there's a rider from the Brazil national team Brazil Pro Cycling Team at number 45 there. Machado, just sitting towards the back, his teammate, Eduardo Gua, also getting some food for the day. That's Chung King Lok now. He's also getting a little bit anxious, moving towards the front. Not keen to let this break go. He probably should rely on his teammates to do the chasing. Doesn't want to burn matches too soon in this stage. So the Minsk team now. Trying to get things moving towards the front. And so through the Mansana Postabon squad, Colombian squad, the pink there. As I said, it's not a, a full chase. It's ones and twos from different teams. And if the breakaway can keep working strongly together, this could be a dangerous move because of the sheer numbers in that break and the teams that are represented. So it looks like there's only one or two teams that have missed it. And they can't really afford to let it go. Right around the back there, number 104 for the giant cycling team. That's Lu Huang. So you can see the speed, you get an idea of the sense of the speed here at the rear of the peloton. And as you look now, they are not giving this breakaway too much room whatsoever. So it's the Minsk team, the Belarusian team, that are doing the pace setting at the moment. And they know they have to close it down. They have to shut this break down because if they give it 30 seconds, it could be enough. And you can see now the riders behind. They've got representation in that break. They're not going to work at all. They're going to try and disrupt it. And you can see the frustration there from the Belarusian rider. And it's the H&R block team, the Canadian squad now, who are going on the attack. And that looks like it could be Travis Samuel there, 
trying to get things moving. I think more so just trying to jump across. So it looks like they're going to close this break down. So they gave it a try. But it looks like not everyone was working in that breakaway because you would, would have thought with the sheer numbers, if they had a pull worked, but the peloton, the power of the peloton, as we say in professional cycling, once they get moving, they can close it down. So, coming up towards almost two hours of racing, would you believe peloton still together now? Another lone attack now off the front. You can see the late there of Lake Taihu. As the riders make their way along the lake now before they hit the circuits. So the wind is helping to push them along. And the sun is just pushing itself its way through. The riders will be happy with that very hard to get away when the roads are like this. Straight stretches, big wide roads, very difficult for a break to be formed. That's number 91 there. It looks like he's got a flat rear wheel. Daniel Bilkman, the German for Team Bike Aid. Well, not a good time to get a flat. He'll be hoping that the uh, brakes will subside. Looks like he's about to pull over. In fact, it might be the best time to have a flat tyre now or a mechanical because not too much action at the front. Stays nice and calm. Wheelies in, off he goes. Well, no push off from the mechanic there. He'll have to do it all himself. And he's down in the big gear. That's what happens when you do get a rear wheel. You change the rear mechanism down into the lower sprocket. Makes it a lot easier for the mechanic to get that rear wheel in as quickly as possible. But the mechanic's job, well, to finish the job is to give the rider a push off. He sort of hesitated and then uh, grabbed the wheel and ran back to the car. This is Team Novo Nordisk now on the front. All of the riders on this squad race with diabetes. It's quite a phenomenal story, really. You can see there changing diabetes across the shoulders, and they certainly are in the professional peloton. They've been around for quite a few years now, and had some great success as well. And that's Taylor Sheldon there for the Jelly Belly squad. America's longest running team. And the name says it all. It's a company that produces jelly beans. Powered by Maxxis. Maxxis tyres, of course. So Peloton, still together. A few attacks coming off the front, but otherwise all together. Six point seven kilometres to go. Yeah, just ones and twos now. Trying to nip off the front. And that's the Colts team. As they make their way across the bridge now. Team of Jakub Marechko there in third wheel. The Villa Triestina squad, the Italian squad, just keeping an eye on things for their main man. And that's what they'll do today. 
as we look out over Lake Taihu, one of China's largest lakes, freshwater lakes. Really is a sight to see. And the Monton Racing Team now also trying to get off the front. over the other side of the bridge now. Looks like another couple of gaps have opened up. Large group now. It is forming off the front, but the peloton again, you can just see they sense the danger with a large group of riders. Well, they've opened up a, well, about a 100 meter gap, so it's not much. Peloton whizzing past the live broadcast position of today's stage. There you can see the pace is on as they make their way through. And it's still the Belarus squad now of Kols that are off the front. Left hand turn now. So many different teams now on the attack, trying to force it. And it's the Jelly Bowley squad now, the American outfit, America's longest running team. I think some 17 years they've been around. And the naming rights sponsor has been Jelly Belly for all of that time. It's the Eritrean rider here who's joining him. Well, they lost three riders, would you believe, two days ago. So they've only got two riders left in the race. Daniel Habtemichael and Zemenfes Zalifmon. And that looks like it is Habtemichael. He was in the break on stage one. So he's been very active talking to his director sport if a couple of days ago Jonathan Eprim who's here with the squad he in fact has an athletics background and he took a team to the Sydney Marathon in Australia and he well he come across cycling with his sporting background and he has fallen in love with it and the passion that he spoke with uh, to me yesterday how passionate he is about trying to help Eritrean cycling they've been inspired by the Eritrean riders like Daniel Teklahamanot who wore the King of the Mountains classification jersey at the biggest race of them all the Tour de France they've got some great young talent Eritrean cycling and they are well and truly on the map and they are on the map in this race because right now it is Heb to Michael who is trying to force a way off the front here with the rider from the Jelly Belly squad. And he's holding his own. But the Peloton are scrambling at the front as well. It's a lot of riders trying to make the break of the day. I'm surprised that a break has not gone clear. Generally that means that the, it's just been too fast. The speed has simply been too high. And you have to be going in excess of 50 kilometers an hour for anything to go clear. There's the leader's jersey of Bovan in the orange colors there. Sitting towards the front, the red jersey there of Cheung King Lok. 
also towards the front. That's the position they want to sit in, out of the wind, but not too close to the front. So the gap is opening up ever so slightly. And a few more riders now trying to go across. And so the two riders there have to Michael and number 131 Castillo, Ulusi Castillo for the Jelly Belly squad. So they've got a short gap, small gap on the peloton. There it is. It's only about, well, I'd be lucky to be 100 metres at this stage. He's just trying to get it going. Castillo, well, he's at back after breaking his ankle and leg this year. Would you believe that? In an earlier race accident, and his team was saying they're just happy that he's back on the bike, the Mexican. So he's motivated, obviously. He wants to try and salvage something out of the season. But look at this road now. It's literally five lanes wide and being helped along by a cross tail wind makes it extremely difficult for any sort of breakaway to succeed because you're just like a sitting duck out in front for a large peloton. But these two, they're trying to make something of it and they're doing a pretty good job at the moment. It's ever so slightly the gap keeps opening up. Not much, you see the attacks that keep happening from behind. But when you see the peloton like that in the rear and where they're just strung out ever so slightly, it just means that the pace is on. Daniel Hub to Michael now, the Eritrean rider. Flicks the elbow for Castillo to come over, the Mexican. Well, they've both got a common goal at the moment. Well, some fishermen there, just in one of the inlets of the lake, looking for the daily catch. Not a bad view either to see the riders. Roll on past. Looks like we've got another mechanical here. And that looked like one of the riders from the Jelly Belly squad. So this is Ben Hill now. Such an aggressive rider. Such an opportunist. The Australian. And it is one of the Jelly Belly riders there. And that's Mike Sheehan, the American. So another rear wheel flat there of for the day. Not too stressed. Trying to assist the, the mechanic there. He's trying to get the wheel in. Now this is well, he's got it in. Changes the gear up. You see there he gets the gear into an easier gear so he can get off, get up and going a lot faster. Meanwhile, his teammate, Castillo, the Mexican, is off the front trying to force the pace. So this won't help the American who's had to do the wheel change. He'll try and use the cars to his advantage. They're not allowed to get a sit per se on the race convoy of vehicles that sit behind the peloton. But as long as they are moving past the vehicles, they can use that slight assistance. They're not allowed to sit directly behind a car for too long. Commissaire will use a little bit of common sense. But if they do sit behind a car for, well, let's say more than 10, 15 seconds, the Commissaire spots it, he'll uh, give them a move along. So Castillo now on the front, the Mexican with Hab to Michael, the Eritrean. Two riders trying to be joined by the Australian Ben Hill and he's got an accomplice with him trying to go across. So Hill, well he sits up there in the overall standings. did a reasonable opening prologue. He sits in 14th position, but he's only eight seconds off the overall lead, is Hill. 
So he's a danger man, really, in the context of the race. There's no mountaintop finish this year. Final stage is a stage, really, that will bring a select group of riders to the finish. But nonetheless, the bonus seconds could form a crucial part of the final classification. So Hill now has crossed that gap, and it's one of the Colts riders who has joined him. Number 143 there, that's Vasiliuk, Audrey Vasiliuk, who has also made it across. So the Colts team, the Belarusian team, they've been very active. Well, Ukrainian team, I should say. And so they've now put another rider in the move. So Vasiliuk and Hill have joined Castillo and had to Michael. So four riders, the gap there you see, just 10 seconds, but it's a bit better than what it was for the first few kilometers. So these four will try now to open up that lead. And he'll, he'll be searching for sprint bonifications. And he'll use it for both his advantage for both the sprint classification and the time bonuses. As I mentioned, 3 two, one time bonuses at the intermediate sprints. There are three of those today. We've already had the first one, of course. We've got two more to go at 73.7 kilometres and then the third one at 98.3 kilometres. And the circuits. that we're on there's three of those so here we go now and Hill now looks like he's going to challenge for this and not only challenge he's going to take it out convincingly so objective achieved for Ben Hill the Australian he will take maximum points and maximum time bonus of three for him and that was a convincing win across the line there so with two laps to go of this finishing circuit. So that final sprint there at 98.3 kilometres. You can see now back in the peloton, it's settled down a bit now. It's the Villa Triestina squad, the team of Jakub Marechko, who are now setting the tempo. Just one rider in the Nippo Vini Fantini squad, the team of Nicolas Marini, the two riders who have won the opening two road stages. A couple of riders are trying to jump off the front. They won't worry about that. They'll just settle into a tempo. The gap has opened up to 17 seconds. So Peloton all together. Breakaway of four off the front. So it's a 15 second lead for those four riders out in front and that's a white jersey there of the team Novo Nordisk. The riders who, all riders on that team have diabetes. Well you can see the peloton in the background. Well it would only just be 17 seconds I would imagine, barely that. And as I said these long straight stretches it makes it a lot easier for the peloton to control when they have a visual of a breakaway. So you can see there's no panic of these teams back here. The Villa Triestina squad. Marechko timed his sprint perfectly yesterday. The Italian, 11 stage wins here. He's actually Polish born, moved to the northern part of Italy when he was five years of age, hot with his Polish mother. And he lives in the northern region now of Brescia famous part of Italy just sitting sort of on the southern tip of the famous Dolomite and Alp region fantastic riding country this is the Israel Academy squad here 
And then it's Itamar Einhorn grabbing some bottles for his teammates. Back with the break, Daniel Habtekamal on the front there. Castillo, the Mexican, back after a serious injury, breaking his leg and ankle this year. So he's motivated to salvage something from the 2017 season. It's not over yet for him. This is the Novo Nordisk squad here. And that's Hendrikus van Zendorn, the Dutch rider. Filling up his jersey with water bottles. And that's the job of the domestiques. And this looks like the St. George cycling team now. A team based out of Sydney, Australia. And they had a good prologue as well. Two of their younger riders had a good ride. Mikael Oristi now from the Delco Marseille squad. Getting some instructions from the team director. Arvis Pizix, the Latvian. Great rider, professional cyclist himself. Now in the director's seat. So there'll be some good knowledge there from Pizix to his teammate. So it's the St. George cycling team who are giving a helping hand now to Villa Triestina. They've got all their riders, you can see in the pink black colors there, all of their riders are massed towards the front there. So they've obviously got some confidence. So let's take a look at this sprint here. Castillo from the Jelly Belly squad. He was motivated, but so too was Ben Hill, the Australian for attacking Team Gusto. And well, he convincingly took it out. There it is. Hill, Vasiliok and Castillo. That was the top three, three, two, one bonification seconds, three, two, one points for the sprint classification. Back with the race live. And they're really not giving this break too much time at all. Well, they're inside 32 kilometers. They have good reason for that. And when you've got a sprinter like Marechko on your team, who took his 11th stage win yesterday of this race. Fair way to have confidence on a flat stage like today. Okay. And as I said, the St. George Cycling Club, the team that's based out of Sydney, have got some young riders on that team. Yeah, they're motivated and they've got some confidence they can deliver one of their riders to a high position today. They managed to take a couple of bonification seconds yesterday. So it looks like one of the riders has dropped back from that breakaway group. Vasiliok. The Colts rider looks like he may have gone back. So just the three breakaway riders now out in front. At the rear of the peloton. Pretty relaxed back here. Just a consistent tempo being set at the front. Team Novo Nordisk also keen to give a helping hand there at the front of affairs. Yeah, the St. George Cycling Club. Caden Groves, one of the youngest riders I would imagine in the race, just 18 years of age. He was the under-19 national road race champion. Focusing on the track program, the Australian high performance program, they have a big presence on the track and a big focus on the track, certainly at Olympic level. There's Ben Hill. Oh, I've talked about him a lot already in this year's race, but for good reason, he keeps putting himself in the breakaway. So too does this man, Daniel. Heb to Michael. He lost three riders from his team just two days ago 
in a nasty crash on stage one. Some 20, 25 riders were caught up in that crash and three of them had to withdraw from the Eritrean national team. So they're down to just two riders in the team. That hasn't dampened the spirits of Habta Michael. He was in the break on stage one. He's in the break again today. So he's obviously got some good legs and wants to test them out. Another Nordisk rider there, just getting on his race radio. That radio will go back to his team vehicle, to his, right, to his director sportif. He'll be either getting instructions or asking for instructions. Just deciding what to do. Well, they don't need to panic because the brake really is not going anywhere. And that third and final sprint has been completed. And Hill, with those three bonification seconds, I think I said he sits in 14th place in the overall standings. So with those three seconds, that will now put him at five seconds off the pace. That will move him up inside the top 10 on the road. And when you think in the context, forget about his overall placing, just think about the seconds that he's behind the race lead. It's none at all. The problem he has is the sprinters in this race, they have the advantage at this stage because the finish line, there is 10, 6 and 4 bonification seconds. So that is where at this stage the race can be won and lost on these flatter stages. But the final stage of this year's race, like last year, it will throw out something from left of centre. It was a select group. And if we cast our minds back, it was Cameron Bailey, the Australian, that went into the final stage last year. He was leading. He crashed. There was a select group that went away. It was Leonardo Duque riding for the Delco Marseille squad. He forced that break and it took enough time to win the race overall. So it's an exciting race, the format, the way they've designed the course around Lake Taihu, one of China's largest freshwater lakes. And great viewing live pictures, great imagery, well it certainly did have its challenges yesterday and the first stage with the wet weather, we, our helicopter really just could not get into the air because of the low cloud, but today thankfully the skies have cleared somewhat and it's quite a pleasant temperature outside there, perfect conditions for a bike race. Perfect conditions at the moment for the riders. They'll certainly need to keep their fluids topped up. Well, the Minsk rider there collecting water bottles. This is Sobol Yahen. Can of Coke in the back pocket as well. Maybe save that for later. And some food as well. Generally inside 10 or 20 kilometers is when feeding from the cars is closed off so the riders now will be trying to get just their final liquids off their team support before they make their way back to the peloton so Castillo sits at 18 seconds off the lead Hill there it is plus eight but taking into account those three bonification seconds puts him at five and Daniel have to Michael He's only at 18 seconds, have to Michael, so he's well within reach. So if he can hold his standings going into this final stage, I just wonder what sort of climbing legs he's got. I would imagine with the build that he's got, he may be able to produce something. There's been something of a phenomenon on the world stage in recent years. Eritrean cycling, they burst onto the scene a few years ago with Africa's first World Tour squad, Team Dimension Data, formerly known as Quebec Racing. They gained entry to the Tour de France 12 months ago. And Eritrean Cycling, they brought their own fan club to the Tour de France. 
They followed the riders around and gee, did they cause some noise on every single stage. It was a sight to see. And Daniel Teklahamanot, he took the leaders king of the mountains classification jersey for a number of stages. You created history, not only for African cycling, but for Eritrean cycling. And now they see, they think, in their minds, the sky is the limit, and so it should be. So they make their way back along the lake now. The three leaders past the outside live broadcast position. Peloton will be coming shortly as well. So the gap has opened up ever so slightly, but for the Peloton, they'll be happy with that. For the sprinters teams, this is what they want. They just want to keep them on a tight leash, but if they can leave them at about 30 seconds, they'll be happy with that. Well, the wind doesn't seem too strong at the moment. If anything, it's died down in these uh, last half hour or so. And it's just a short strip along the lake here make another left turn and then head slightly inland as I said they're not long laps 18 kilometers a lap three laps in total 26 kilometers to go there's the leader Guillaume Bovan the Canadian So the two teams, Nippo Venifantini and Vilia Triestina are controlling the front of the race for their two main sprinters, Marechko and Nicolas Marini. Two Italians riding for rival squads, dominating the sprints so far at this year's race. There's Daniel Heb to Michael in the breakaway. Castilla, the Mexican. Good to see him out in the break today. After a terrible crash earlier this year, breaking his ankle and leg. It's amazing that he's even back on the bike, let alone racing once again. United Healthcare Riders in the blue colours, the American squad. Another American team that's been around for quite a few years now along with the Jelly Belly Maxis squad. A couple of those riders sitting down the rear there, number 134. And that was the ride of Tyler Sheldon, the American. So the team here on the front, the orange colors of Nicola Marini. Marini said after his stage win, he doesn't have a contract for next year. So his victory was super important. And he had a bad accident earlier in the season, so he's happy to come back from that. He's motivated. And he'll certainly be searching for another stage win. And his team, well, they've got confidence in him at the moment. So they should after his stage when he got the better off Marechko. Marechko really hot favourite to almost claim all of the sprint stages here, but sooner or later you're going to be challenged, and that's exactly what Marini did. So the young Italian, he'll look to claim a second stage win. He got a stage win last year, so he's matched that. And now he'll look to do go one better. Breakaway, 34 seconds is the gap. Just three riders. There's the blackboard up, letting them know what the gap is.
pink colours there. Of oh, the St George cycling team, based out of Sydney, Australia. And that's Eduardo Guo from the Brazil cycling team. They've, got a, they've brought a young team here. So this would be a bit of an eye-opener for the Brazilians. I'm not sure the last two days with the weather they would have enjoyed it too much. So Guo, he's been given the duty as water boy, filling his bag. You can see he puts one up in the top of his jersey there. He'll probably try and fit one or two underneath his jersey and then another one or two in his pockets. That's what they have to do. They're called the domestiques for that reason. They look after their sprinters, their general classification riders. And they do, I guess you can call it the dirty work. They go back to the rear of the peloton. They forego their own chances in order to try and get a result for their team overall. And they're the un unsung heroes in a lot of cases on professional cycling teams. A lot of the time you don't see them before live pitches go to air in, ra in bicycle races around the world. Their work is done well and truly before that. But certainly their team leaders pat them on the back each night and sing their praises and they really do earn their keep. So the Israel Cycling Academy team now also getting towards the front. So they're assisting with this chase for Guillaume Bovan, the French Canadian comes from Montreal. It's officially a bilingual city. And it's a city that, well, is searing heat in summer in the 30 plus degrees Celsius. But then, believe it or not, it has minus 20 to 30 in winter. Huge snowfalls and a real climate that, a contrast of climates, I should say, from winter to summer. And I've, I must say, I've only been there in summer and it is a beautiful place to visit. I'm sure it is in winter, but gee, you'd like to go there prepared. Bovan, as I mentioned, he just come off the World Championships in Bergen, Norway. He's had a pretty good year. And he'd dearly love to finish it off with a victory here, overall victory. That opening prologue, it set it up for Bovan. He took it out and he's held the leader's jersey since. He did have that crash on stage one. managed to regroup. He was a bit stiff and sore at the beginning of the stage two. And in fact, he said he wasn't sure if he'd even make the start. He was limping around at the hotel that morning. Well, our fishermen are still there. Jelly Belly boys, uh, they're pretty happy. Giving a smile to the cameras. It's the end of a long season for the American squad. And they race a lot of shorter circuit races on the American circuit. American tours too, they're coming back into the forefront of the North American calendar. The Tour of Utah, Tour of Alberta, California, Colorado. All these tours now are making a big presence. And some of the World Tour teams now go across to compete on those races. It's got a healthy scene there and some of these, uh, some new teams are popping up as well. So it looks like it's got a bit of a rebirth, the North American scene. Speaking of North American racing, there's the blue colours of the United Health Care squad. Tanner Pup there, closest to camera. And Jonathan Clark, the Australian, comes from Melbourne, Australia, but he lives now in the States on the East Coast. He's got an American partner. So too does his, one of his, he's got two brothers, both who've raced and both well credentialed. So he's got another brother who lives in the States as well. He said to me the other day, they don't catch up too regularly, just at bike races. They live on the other side of the country, opposite sides of the country, I should say. But they both love it there and they spend most of their time, they barely get time to travel back to Australia. It's really just for the early part of the cycling season in January, February, where the the world season really does kick off in Australia, down in the states of Victoria and South Australia. The first world tour race of the year is in fact in South Australia, the tour down under. 
around the city of Adelaide. So the breakaway, 20 kilometres to go. You can see there the peloton, they're just being annoying for that breakaway because they won't let them go over that 30 odd second gap. They're really going to just hold them there at that. They're going to peg them at that. They'll be aware of that though. And they're not prepared to sit up. They'll try and stay out there, just keep a tempo. They won't kill themselves staying out in that break. But they'll just stay out there for just in case. You never know what can happen back in the peloton. You get one of one or two of the sprinters who have a mechanical or get caught up in a crash, suddenly the pace will drop off. And then suddenly the advantage will go to the break. So they'll hold out hope that just maybe they'll get an opportunity to go for stage honours. Well, this has been a lot more relaxed stage, it seems, for the race compared to the last two days, as I said. The contrasting weather that we had from the opening prologue, it was 30 to 35 degree temperatures, extremely hot. It wasn't so bad for a 5.3 kilometre opening prologue. Riders can handle those conditions. But then the cloud closed in and the weather dropped, well, probably at least some 15 to 20 degrees in Celsius to the next stage. It's quite, felt quite cold, in fact. Out on the course. And then stage two was similar. Miserable conditions. But the riders, they fronted up and they know that's what they have to do. That's what professional cycling is about. Very few bike races have been postponed or cancelled because of weather conditions. It needs to snow. And even then, it won't necessarily be cancelled. So the riders now making their way under the one kilometre to go marker. So they'll come through with one lap to go just 18 odd kilometres left to race. The sprinters teams now will start to slowly but surely up the tempo. 72 there leading them through. That's Giuseppe Fonzi, the Italian. He's been a big workhorse for Modecco. He's main man, he's sprinter. And number 36 there, Uchima, Kohai Uchima, also for the Nippo Vini Fantini squad. Daniel Hope to Michael, they're a train rider. Well, he's director sport if. Jonathan Eprim, he'd be very happy indeed. Just two riders left in the race, and I've just spotted the other rider at the rear, on the, just along the barriers there. So he's safely in the peloton, so that's good news for the Eritrean cycling team. So the peloton goes through the finish time for the second last time. Next time through will be the finish. 17.4 kilometres to go. That's for the leaders. The gap is 32 seconds. So no panic, no stress at all for the peloton. They will up the tempo though in these closing 17 kilometres. As a rule of thumb, professional racing we say one minute for every 10 kilometers that's the marker that's the time gap that a peloton can bring back one minute in every 10 kilometers so they're well inside that 30 odd seconds with 17 kilometers to go the break in theory would need almost two minutes if they would have any chance of staying away so it's been a real controlled race for the last 30 odd kilometres now for the break. The Eritrean flicks the elbow. They're not giving in. The Mexican Castillo for Jelly Valley, America's longest running squad. And Ben Hill for Attacky Team Gusto. Hill is engaged to 
double individual pursuit world champion, Rebecca Wyasak. He broke his collarbone in the French region of Breton earlier in this earlier this year. So he's had a bit of an up and down season, but he's come back strongly. And he certainly showed it in these last few days, well, since the race began. And he took those intermediate sprint points, the final sprint, gained three seconds. He trailed by eight seconds at the beginning of the stage. So he's now down to just five seconds off the lead. His team director, Peter Shannon, said they're really setting him for a tour that comes up in the next two weeks, Tour of Hainan. But nonetheless, he's feeling good here. He's feeling fresh. So he is up for the challenge. So the gap has gone out now to 43 seconds, according to our race clock there, race data. So Daniel had to Michael. Followed by Ulisi, Castillo Ulisi, the Jelly Belly man. Another man who had a horrific crash earlier this season. Broke his leg and ankle. It's a miracle that he's back racing. And then of course the Australian, Ben Hill. So they're upping the tempo. They're calling the Peloton's bluff. And now they are upping the tempo. 48 seconds. If this race data is correct, this is good news for the break. There's Bovan in the orange colours, you can see. Settled nicely in the middle of the peloton. No stress for him. He knows the sprinters' teams. They're the ones that need to do the chasing. The team's off Marechko. There he is, Jakub Marechko. Yesterday's stage winner in wet conditions. He'll be feeling good. He's got his mojo back. He got the better of his compatriot, Nicolas Marini from Nippo Vini Fantini. He's got all of his teammates in front of him. They've got full confidence. Giuseppe Fonzi there at the front of that team. Hill, this is the type of race he likes to ride out in front. He doesn't like sitting in the peloton. He'd prefer to be off the front in the action. Well, the Jolly Belly rider there, Sheldon, still sitting at the rear. So to his teammate, Keegan Swirl, pull to Americans. Big wide open roads make it easier for this peloton when they do start to up the tempo, but it'll it will cause for a hectic sprint. There'll be plenty of opportunities for strong teams to move up, and the strongest team really. That will be the difference, I think, in today's finish. But who knows? Maybe these three can stay away. Hill, Hab to Michael, and Castillo in that order. Across the bridge they go for the final time. The gap now under 40 seconds. So you can see now the Peloton, St. George cycling team. They've decided it's time. It's time to up the tempo. So to Villia, Triestina squad. And the peloton now bunching up a little bit more as well. Starting to get themselves into position. Start thinking of the finish. Getting down towards that 10 kilometres to go. 13.2 kilometres left.
So three riders. Ben Hill, the Australian, riding for Taki Team Gusto. He's forcing the pace. And he's had good at support from Castillo, the Mexican, for Jelly Belly. And this man here, Daniel Habta Michael, the Eritrean rider, riding for his national team. There's Castillo, he's got race radio in. He'll be getting feedback, knowing what's going on behind. They're not worried about that though. They're just focusing on the job at hand and it is trying to hold this peloton at bay. So you can see there's a little bit more anxiousness out in front. Meanwhile, back here, the peloton, it's a calm build up. They know what they need to do. They just need to slowly eat into this lead. Don't panic. Have a slow build up. And that's exactly what they're doing. The Israel Cycling Academy now also getting involved. Why wouldn't they? They've got two riders that are leading categories. Jason Lowndes, the blue jersey for the best young rider. And of course, Guillaume Bovin, the French Canadian who is leading the race, race overall. So the peloton all together. There's Jason Lowndes, the rider in question. Down towards the back there with Bovan. So they're not too concerned yet about moving up. 23 seconds. So they've got this breakaway in their sights. Hill flicks the wrist, flicks the elbow. Hab to Michael, rolls over. They've got a smooth rotation system going here, these three. It's really going to be a big ask for them to stay clear. It's been good conditions today. We're very happy we can bring you live pictures of this race. And it is going to be a fantastic finish. 10 kilometers to go left in the stage. All set to be a day for the sprinters. George cycling team now taking their turn at the front. Well, it's been that familiar sight, hasn't it? Of just these three teams, St. George cycling, Nippo Veni Fantini, and Villa Triestina. The question for me is, who from the St. George cycling team will they be sprinting for? because they've got a couple of riders there that can challenge. Caden Groves, the young 18 year old, probably one of the youngest riders in the race. He could do the sprint, so, could do, so too could Morgan Smith, in fact, the New Zealander from Auckland. Well, he sits in second place, just one second off the lead. So surely you think they'd be setting it up for Morgan Smith, the New Zealander. He resides in Melbourne, Australia. He's Kiwi partner. She moved over for study. So he followed her to the mainland of Australia and he likes it there. And he rides for a team based out of New South Wales, from Sydney, in fact. And he's got a good synergy with them. And they've got a good synergy because they did a great opening prologue. They had two riders right up there. Groves did a good at ride. He was right in the mix earlier on. And then Smith got the better of him. He just couldn't quite do enough to win the race overall. So nine kilometers to go, just 12 seconds. 
the leaders make their way past the outside broadcast facility. The Peloton, they make the left turn on to the Lake Foreshore. And they are not far behind them now, just 11 seconds. We are staying with the race now, all the way to the finish line. Castillo now, he's got the look of expression, hasn't he, on his face. He's starting to hurt. Hill now takes over the Australian out of the saddle. Have to Michael on the wheel. They've worked well together, these three, but it's just not going to be enough, I fear. The Peloton are just timing it perfectly. And you can see that. Now you can see the tempo is being upped as they jump out of that left corner there. And it's just a controlled tempo. Nippo Veni Fantini. And that's Yuma Kushai there leading them through. Castillo again on the front. Hill pushing as well. Geez, they are not prepared to sit up here, these three. I thought they may have just called it a day. Said, well, we took the intermediate sprint. We got what? We got something out of the day. Now we'll sit back and conserve. But no, they didn't. They kept on pushing and they said to the peloton, you're going to have to come out to us. We're not going back to you. And so that is exactly what is happening. So we are staying live with the race now, all the way to the finish. And we're going to be in for a treat. Things are setting up for a mass sprint to the line for the third stage in a row. We've had the opening prologue. And stage one, it was Nicola Morini, the Italian, for Nippo Vantini, who took line honours. Yesterday, he looked set to take his second stage win, but it was Jakub Morechko who had other things on his mind and had something to say about it. It was a blanket finish in the end, but Morechko notched his 11th stage win of this race. Morini still wears the green jersey as a leading sprinter, the points classification. So those two, amongst others, they will battle it out today with just 6.7 kilometres to go. But these three out in front, Hill, Castillo and Habta Michael, they are going to force this peloton to bring them back. They're going to make them earn it and work for it. On stage one, the break, well, they lasted until inside five kilometres to go. I think it's going to be something similar today. See a bottle there just getting thrown. Riders just trying to get rid of excess weight. None of the things that will give them an advantage for the sprint finish. They'll try and offload it. Jackets, water bottles, any race food that they don't need. There's no point eating anything now. It's not going to do a thing for you. And it looks like one of the Israel Academy cycling team riders that has moved to the front. United Healthcare also, they've got a sprinter on their squad. They know how to do lead outs. So too H&R Block as well. So there's other teams that can get in the mix today. It's not a foregone conclusion that Morechko or Marini will win. Sure, they are the two favorites of today, but there are other teams that can challenge. And those two that I just mentioned H&R Block and of course United Healthcare, I would imagine El Zarte will be the sprinter for United Healthcare. He wears number 61, so we'll look for him. You can see now a few moves as there's been a crash. Looks like there might have been something happened there, maybe just a mechanical back in the peloton. Ben Hill now, the Australian. He's stretching his legs. He's saying it's time to go for home. 
The game is almost up, but not for him. He will not give in. That's what I love about this Australian. Look at the strength that he's showing. He's dropped his two breakaway companions. Ham to Michael has tried to go with him, but he can't. Hill now is going to push it all the way to the finish. Inside five kilometres to go. Ham to Michael looks like he will go back to the peloton. Hill, what an aggressor he is. And he's got such an engine on him. I think it's going to come to nothing. Well, you can see some riders right in the back of the picture there that have been dropped from the peloton. I just wonder if there's been a crash or a mechanical. Our camera's missed it. But we will get an update on that, I would imagine, post-stage. So, Hill, the game is up. He knows it. And he's going to be caught almost exactly on four kilometres to go. Now the focus shifts to the peloton and the sprinters. It's H&R Block, that's Cartier, the Canadian, who's done a mountain of work in the first two stages. He's been in both breakaways. He's now trying to set it up for his teammates. Vilia Triestina for Moreshko, there on the right of the picture with the yellow sleeves. Moreshko will be nestled back there. He will try and hide and then the, until the final 200 or so metres. Look for Morini. He wears the green jersey. His teammates are in orange colours in the Nippo Vini Fantini. The pink and black there, that's the St. George team. Look for Morgan Smith. He sits in second place overall, wearing number 195. Number 194 there. At the rear, that looks like Thomas Hubbard there. So Hubbard is not towards the front. Is that Matthew Zenovich there as well? On the front there, trying to do some work to keep his two riders, Groves and Smith, towards the front. Yeah, you can see Groves and Smith, so they are both in the mix. The Minsk team now trying to move towards the front. Hold position. So a number of teams now trying to get in the mix, but look at Vilia Trestina. They will not give up their place at the front. They know what they need to do. They need to deliver their rider, Jakub Morechko, inside, well, 150, 200 metres to the line, and then let him do the rest. He's proven on 11 occasions before that he has been the best here. 11 stage wins to him. Marini, oh, a little bit of jostling going on back there. The right of the picture between Nippo Vini Fantini and the team of Marechko. H&R Block, the Canadian squad. They're trying to jostle in behind and alongside, but at the same time stay out of the wind. That is the challenge, trying not to hit the wind too early. 1.6 kilometres to go. Jason Lowndes in the blue jersey. The best young rider. Lowndes is moving up. There's Bovan, the leader of the race. He's switching from wheel to wheel. He hasn't got too many teammates to help him. Lowndes is one of those, but he also needs to protect himself for the overall classification. So Bovan just needs to stay out of trouble and hope for the best. United Healthcare now, they look like the first team to open it up as they make their way around the left-hand turn. Looks like all riders will go through safely. Inside one kilometre to go now. Sevilla so Triestina, they will not give up their place at front, but a couple of the blue jerseys of United Healthcare have got in between them. So this will mess up their run, and it is. 
And it's Tanner Putt, the American who is opening up the sprint. Well, he's opened it up very early indeed. Almost too early. And is it Alzate now who's jumped a long way from home? Let's look for our long shot camera now of the finish line. Alzate pushing towards the line. Marechko, where is he? Marechko is going to take it out. So it looks like Jakub Marechko will have taken out the stage from Nicolas Marini was up there. He, I think he has finished in second place. Well, what a sprint finish it was. I apologize for the picture there. Our live fixed camera was not in position. There's Marini. Well, I think he has had to settle for second place because the winner, from all accounts, should be Jakub Morechko from the Villa Triestina squad. Let's take a look at the replay now. The Delco Marseille squad also in the mix. But on the line, Marechko. <laughs> Delco Marseille there, punching the handlebars. So I think, in fact, the Delco Marseille rider may have been in second place. And the camera there sticking with Marini. But I'm afraid he's in second or third place on the stage. It is Marechko who will have taken it out, the Italian. And what's that? 12 stage victories for Marechko. Thank you to his teammate, he says. That's the life of the domestiques. They do all the work and then hope for the glory. Well, he shakes the head a little. He'll be content. He's made the podium. It's not what he wanted. He wanted the stage victory. He's searching for a contract in 2018, Marini. So he's desperate for some results. He wants to show himself. Having a chat there with one of the giant Asia teams. Well, he's smiling. Thumbs up. All things considered, it was a pretty good day. So stage three, done and dusted. Morechko takes it out. Marini here in third place. Podium to come. So the ride is chatting. Let's try and have a listen. <laughs> well, sounds like uh, they're not too happy with their finish lead out. Uh, still pats on the back for Morini. He should be pretty happy with his race here so far. He didn't do a bad prologue himself, in fact. And at the start of the day, he only trailed by two seconds. So he'll get some more bonifications. And I just wonder, well, by my calculations, he'll be at least one second off the jersey of Guillaume Bovard. But the big question is, Morechko, who trailed by eight at the start of the day. He will get 10 bonification seconds. So in theory, unofficially, Morechko may well go into the lead today. So we'll wait for official confirmation. Remember there were three intermediate sprints today that carried a total of nine bonification seconds. Three, two, one for each sprint. And then of course the finish 10, six and four.
So we'll get official results very soon. For the riders, 134 kilometres down. And in just a shade under three hours, that was a relatively quick stage and an uneventful, well, in the sense that let's hope there were no crashes or our cameras didn't pick up any, so I'm presuming there weren't. A couple of mechanicals, a couple of flat tyres, but so most teams should get through unscathed today. Let's hope so, anyway. The riders will now turn their attention to stage four. Well, firstly to the recovery. Get to the hotel, get a massage, and then they'll start to think about what they can do on stage four of the tour of Taihu Lake. It's been a great race so far, and there's plenty more action to come. <laughs> So a couple of riders who've been dropped off coming in. So there it is, confirmation. Jakob Marechko, the Italian, notching his 11th stage win. Nicolas Marini, in fact, in second place, so not third. Benjamin Giroud, the Frenchman, Fidelco Marseille. And Ryan McCannelly, the Australian, in fourth place on the stage. He's been right up there. Bovan in seventh place. No bonification seconds for him. So the leader of the race may in fact relinquish that jersey today. Quintin Pacher in ninth place. And Luis Bermudez, the Colombian for Manzana. Postabon rounding out the top 10. Two hours and 52 seconds, 52 minutes I should say, and 51 seconds was the time for the stage. So that was a fast stage. And Marechko. He's just got the better of them, hasn't he? He's got a strong team. We saw that. They did the majority of the work on the stage. And so the general overall classification, because Marini finished in second place, it gave him six seconds. He traveled, trailed by one. He has got Marechko by one second now. So he will go into the lead. Alzate from United Healthcare will drop into third. Bovan now drops to fourth at four seconds. So what a switch around in the overall classification. So Marini, not all was lost for him. He managed second place on the stage and he now leads that classification. He does, however, relinquish the green jersey sprinters classification to Marechko because of today's win. He sits on 39 points and Marini on 36. So plenty of changes in the top order on the overall classification and the sprint classification as well. So Marini, I think in fact, maybe the first time he has grabbed the leader's jersey. Let's recap the finish once more. It was tight to the line. Marechko, though, in the middle there. The yellow sleeves, he took it out. Benjamin Giraud pouching the bars. Third for him, though. Marini in second place. Bavan was right up there. The man wearing the leader's yellow, uh, orange jersey. He was in seventh place. It's just not quite got the speed of those pure sprinters. Marini now, he'll be happy with himself. I wonder if he's realised that he's got the jersey. I'm sure he will have by now. Race officials would have made him aware. So a beautiful part of today's stage. Around Tahu Lake. And the two cities of Huzhou and Changjing. And we saw in the opening shots, what a beautiful cities they are. Lowndes is one of those, but he also needs to protect himself. 
for the overall classification. So Bovan just needs to stay out of trouble and hope for the best. United Healthcare now, they look like the first team to open it up as they make their way around the left-hand turn. Looks like all riders will go through safely. Inside one kilometre to go now. So Villa Tristina, they will not give up their place at front, but a couple of the blue jerseys of United Healthcare have got in between them. So this will mess up their run, and it is. And it's Tanner Park, the American who is opening up the... Well, let's go now to our overall race leader. Nicholas didn't quite make it today, but I think you're leading overall. What, how was the sprint? Yeah, it was a very windy and fast stage. We went all day full gas. And in the end, I didn't feel very good, but I had to try to sprint because I was uh, going to catch the orange jersey. And uh, I did my best, but Maresco today had uh, better legs. I can, I can say that I'm happy with the second place, but at least I had the general uh, leading uh, and we will try again tomorrow. I think there is a stage that I won last year, so I hope uh, to repeat. <laughs> so is it, it feels strange you lost the sprint, but you're in orange. Would you rather win the sprint or...? Yeah, I prefer win uh, the, sta the stage because, uh, as I said, I'm searching for a team, so I have to do my best uh, to show myself and uh, to try to find... Uh, a good team for the next year, I hope. Yeah. And what was the course like today by the lake? Quite windy or not too bad? Yeah, it was too much windy. Yes, very fast. And some team like Wheeler and uh, United of Care tried to attack and uh, break the group, but uh, it was uh, too flat and uh, they didn't do nothing. So we arrived at the sprint. We worked with uh, the Japanese guy, Uchima, did a great job. And uh, yes, they controlled the race to try to win, but uh, we didn't get it, but we'll try again tomorrow. And hopefully the legs will be a bit better tomorrow and you can win tomorrow. Yeah, I hope that the legs will be better and I'm sure it will be. <laughs> Thank you, Nicola. Thank you. Well, Nicolas Marini there, the Italian, he's a happy man, isn't he? He's smiling. Well, and he mentioned he's looking for a contract next year, so... For a guy who's under a little bit of pressure, I guess, to get some results for himself, he's uh, he seems quite relaxed and, well, you heard it, he wants that stage win first and foremost, but he'll happily take that leader's jersey. And he leads by just one second over Morechko, Jakob Morechko. 12 stage victories for Morechko. Hard to believe in a race that's been going now in its eighth edition. I think in the first uh, first or second edition, Morechko, he notched up seven victories, which is almost every single stage. He was simply dominant. And so Marini and Morechko, they're the two that are dominating these road stages. Obviously, Bovan, Guillaume Bovan, the Canadian from Montreal, he took out that opening prologue. And since then, it's been all sprint stages. Ben Hill, probably the most notable rider outside of those. He's been in all of the breakaways, collected some bonification sprints. Let's just take a look again at the last few metres of this sprint stage. You can see Bovan in the background there in the leader's orange jersey. But it's Morechko who took out the win. The Delco Marseille rider, in fact, in third place. Uh, Nicola Marini, almost hidden from pitcher in second position. So Morechko, he seems very calm and composed in the sprint finishes. There's our place getters. Getting ready for the podium. That's Giro, the Delco Marseille rider, Benjamin Giro. What a stage in Tour of China, Hainan, Taiwan, and Shanghai Lake. So he's a bit of a specialist in Asian racing.
the Frenchman. He's 28 years, 31 years of age, in fact, I should say. So he's got some experience, Giro. And he, well, you can see he's punching the handlebars today. Okay, he's disappointed right. in himself. Chung King Lock there, the rider for Hong Kong. He should hold on to that red leader's jersey. And Daniel Herb to Michael. Looks like he'll be on the podium as well. Talking to Nazim what? As a reporter or just... Yeah, I can do, but the, the African guy needs a translator. I'm getting out and do an interview with him now with a translator. No. Oh, so just waiting for all of the formalities. Yeah, I'm just doing one of these. Should we get in order? Before they announce the riders up on the podium. Come here, Delta, man. So it looks like we're going to have Benjamin Giroud to say a few words, a 31-year-old. So let's go down now to our reporter, Benjamin Giroud, to speak with him. Giroud, how was the stage today, Giroud? It was fast because of the start, in the first lap was uh, rolling, so it's right fast to go in the breakaway, and after the win was uh, across, so it continued to fight, and uh, it's only one uh, small rest time uh, on the first uh, final circuit lap, but after uh, it began to lead out for the sprint, and uh, the final was a uh, little odd. A little odd? In, in what way was it odd, the final? Well, sorry, you said that the final was a little odd, and in what way, the sprint was strange? Or? Yeah, a little, because it was a corner at one kill on the left, so a few team fight to be in uh, first position on the corner. And at this moment, it was a big fighting. And the stage of the whole and the last couple of stages and looking ahead to tomorrow, what are you expecting tomorrow? I think it continued to fight because the uh, yellow jersey changed and um, it will be uh, more fighting for, for the day. And the team, how are the team feeling? Are the team good? Yeah, 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 good. We have a new rider, so we try to work together, but it's, it's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you heard it from Giroud. He's going to be continuous fighting. As the race moves further into the week, it's just separated by seconds only, literally. One second, second separating the top two. And the winner of the 2017 Bank of Legends was halfway stage three. So, Marini on the podium, so too Giroud. And now the winner, Jacob Marinchko, takes his place on the dais, on the top step, stage number 12, victory for him. He's become a bit of a cult hero at this race. Medals presented to each of the three riders. Really is a big occasion. The, the stage presentations. And the organizers, they take a lot of pride in their race. Dignitaries from each of the regions present the riders. Of course, the race mascot here being presented as well, along with the flowers. There it is, the top three, Jakub Monechko, Nicolas Marini and Benjamin Giroud. Two Italians and a Frenchman rounding out the podium. So we've had a great first three stages and a prologue tomorrow. Stage four, 117.4 kilometres. We hope you can join us then for some more action of the tour of Lake Taihu. We'll see you then.